Hello YouTube land and welcome to another edition of Teacher Talks Second Grade. In this video, I am going to be talking a little bit about basic addition and some different strategies we can solve the same problem with. So we'll be talking about composing and decomposing numbers as well as counting up and counting on. So I'm a second grade teacher, I've been doing that about seven years and I know this new uh, format of math, our new strategies, let's call it the common core. Um, has introduced some new ways of doing math and I know a lot of parents at home are a little bit frustrated with that and I was as well until I started teaching it and I realized that this is often the way that myself and I think a lot of adults are thinking about numbers we just haven't really put it on paper like this so let's talk about some more traditional ways of adding these two numbers together so 8 plus 3 if you're just learning your numbers you might count up on your fingers to 8 and then count um, keep counting up to 8, 9, 10, and 11, counting up. Counting on would be picking the larger number, in this case 8, and counting on three more. So 8, 9, 10, 11. With the composing and decomposing numbers, what we're talking about is the ability to break up some of these numbers. So that 3 is just three ones. So we can separate those and take them apart into a 1, 1, and a 1 or maybe a 2 and a 1, and that's what we're going to do in this case. You'll notice that I'm going to break these apart into a 2 and a 1. I'm going to put the 2 on the top because I know that I am going to, after I decompose that, I'm going to compose a new number using the 8 and the 2 to make our friendly 10. We talk a lot about how 10 is such an awesome number with the common core in the classroom, and of course it is. It's just an easy number to count up, count down. So what we're going to do is get our 3 and we are going to blow it up. We're gonna take it apart. We're gonna decompose it. We're gonna make it into a two and a one. And then we are gonna draw a simple line through that to show that we have destroyed the three, turned it into a two and a one. And you can tell by some of the language, this is how I sort of speak in the classroom to explain this to the kids. So now we have an eight, a two, and a one. So now we're gonna combine that eight and the two Eight, nine, ten. So we're going to try to make that friendly ten. Anytime we can do it, we're going to make that friendly ten. Now we've used that eight and the two. We stuck them together. We composed them. So now we're going to draw a simple line through there. So what numbers are we left with? We've got our friendly ten. We've got our one. I like it even better when the kids can line these up. So this one can go kind of into the ones column here, if you will. And we'll cross out that one. And now we have 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 set of 10 plus no sets of 10 is 1, so 11. I know it feels like we went a long way here, but if you're an adult out there, I want you to think about what you might do in the grocery store or some other application when you have a number like that. And I bet that in your head, you're kind of saying, all right, 8 plus 2 of these makes 10 plus 1 more makes 11. So this is kind of drawing it out and kind of going the long way. And eventually the kids are going to understand how to compose and decompose so quickly that we kind of turn into doing it in our heads. So instead of counting on 8, 9, 10, 11, that we're going to have the kids decomposing. 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 1 more is 11. I've had some other parents say, who cares? What's the big deal? Well, obviously for this basic of math problems, it doesn't really matter at this point. However, as we know, the math is going to get much more complicated and we're going to get into um, repeated addition leading into multiplication, bigger and stronger numbers, and really understanding these numbers. That's the whole point of the common core with the math. So the point is that if the students can understand strategies like this, that we can compose and decompose numbers, that when we get to higher levels of math, it's going to be easier from, for them and they're going to be under, able to understand what they're doing with the numbers instead of just following a formula. I hope this helped. Leave a comment if it didn't. Leave a comment if it did. Let me know if there's anything else I can explain out there. And I've got all kinds of different videos on this Teacher Talks. Some math, a whole lot of book reviews, and uh, basically anything you want to know about first, second, or third grade. So if there's something you want to know, leave a comment. Let me know. I'll make a video. Have a great day.